Okay, as you remember from before, we were uh, copying um, Linux from the DVD down onto the hard drive by using the cheat code 2HD equals and then the name of the partition of the hard drive. And that can be um, a hard drive formatted as most any type of a Linux hard drive, EXT3, EXT4, or it can be a Windows type hard drive, such as an NTFS hard drive or a FAT32 um, FAT hard drive. Um, I chose to make it an NTFS hard drive simply to uh, uh, show my point. Once that has copied to the hard drive, it then will bring up a little menu that says that asks you whether you want to make a another um, virtual hard drive on on your hard drive um, that you can use for your personal data. And I said yes and um, made it one that was about four gigabytes in size. So now let's reboot our system using this hard drive. I'm going to reboot here. I'm back in VirtualBox and we're rebooting. OK, at this point we get our menu like before. I'll hit the F3 key um, just simply so I can stop the screen. Otherwise it would boot on me automatically while I'm trying to talk here. And I will type in Nopix. Now in this case, I want to say from hard drive equal slash dev slash hd, oh, I'm sorry, sda1. Now it is going to, um, I, I'm still using my DVD at this point in order to get this boot menu up because the system did not change the computer's MBR. It didn't do anything fancy with putting down grub or anything like that. We're still using whatever it had, um, which in my case was nothing. But in your case, will probably be the Windows MBR. In any case, we didn't change any of that. So we've got to use the DVD to get up to the boot menu. But once I put in the codes that I put in here, Nopix space, um, hard um, from hard drive, it will then boot from the um, ISO image that is on the hard drive. I can remove the DVD. I can then use that DVD to burn DVDs or that DVD drive. I can do anything I want. I And everything is going to run at hard drive speed. Because I am running off the hard drive, I am not running off the DVD. Um, and um, it will boot fast, and it will run pretty much at hard drive speeds. The other cool thing about this is I can now go over here. Um, and if I want, I can create files. In fact, I've already booted this system a couple times, and I've created a file. And uh, here's my, fi whoop, my file here. Um, I could edit this file. And the cool thing about this is this now being on the hard drive um, is a permanent file. This is my file. This is a good file. This is permanent. Well, as permanent as anything on hard drive is. but. Um, so I'm no longer solely plagued by the good and bad points of using a live distribution. I can actually save data here permanently. Uh, of course, I could do that with any live distribution by using, say, a thumb drive or something, or by mounting my hard drive onto the system. But this does it in a very clean, straightforward manner. That's really cool. Now, what's even better is Nopix uses something called a Union FS. I believe there's a new updated name to that. But the basic concept is 
that this is still a DVD image. So conceptually, I can't do things like I can't change my password. I can't add a user because I've got to modify the password file and all these system files kept under like slash etc. And as soon as, because those are on DVD, as soon as I take the system down and reboot it, I lose all that information. But with UnionFS, what happens is it keeps a bit of data on my virtual hard drive so that if I change my password file or my shadow file, which is where the passwords are stored under slash, uh, what is it, slash etc slash shadow, that is actually stored in the, um, in that new virtual hard disk. And so when any time the system needs to get a password, for example, first it will look in the um, volatile memory in the virtual hard drive I have and say, is there a password file there? Should I use that password? If that file doesn't exist, it goes to the DVD image. So it gives me the possibility of actually making changes to the system that I couldn't make on just strictly a live DVD. As an example, suppose I want to add a user. Let me add a user. Uh, first, I'll become root. And then I think there's a system on here called KUser to that will let me add users. OK, let's add user. Add user. Uh, what user do we want to add? We'll add a user what we'll call David. Oh, let's all lowercase letters, because we're a Unix person. OK. and. Um, um, I don't know what UID number we'll use here. Uh, this isn't a very serious user, so we'll just let it default to that UID number. Let's set the password to um, call 911, call 911. Um, that sets my password. Let's set the login shell to bash. Um, that's an OK place for the home directory. Um, I don't need to fill out any of this other stuff. Disable account? No, I want the account enabled. Create a home directory. Copy the skeleton. Yeah, OK. Let's just, um, OK. So we should have a new user. Let's see if we do. Um, Well, indeed. Um, apparently, I already experimented with this and made up a user called dmandel. At, but here's a user called David. So suppose I want to become David. Um, I should be able to become David by doing uh, something like this. Now. I'm not quite sure why it didn't ask for my password, but uh, I won't worry about that now. Normally, it does, um, and it seems like it should, but a small issue. Um, OK, where am I? Well, I'm on David. There's the files he owns. Let's see if he actually owns them. Whoops. Yes, indeed. David is the user that owns those. And there's a group, David, that is the group associated with those files. So I have actually been able to create a user. If I would take this system down, I reboot the system, David would still be a user on the system. I could actually add, within limits, probably add package, uh, software packages to the system. and. Um, um, actually modify the system a bit, and um, it will work. And uh, that seems totally cool to me. Uh, that This is where Nopix is different than other live distributions. As I said before, uh, it is meant to be a production level live distribution. And, and so, you know, in my mind, it's the best live distribution around. Um, 
And um, so that takes care of that. Um, the Let's see if there's anything else I want to talk to about uh, in this session. Well, yeah, actually, there is a little bit more that I wanted to mention in this chapter. Um, the one thing I wanted to mention here is when you handle a network of Linux workstations, that's a lot different than administrating one system at a time. Um, one of the things you may want to do is you may want to share everybody's home directories. So no matter what machine a person sits down at when they log on, they get the same home directories because that's stored on a uh, central server or a group of central servers. Um, there are ways of doing that in Unix. Uh, that's commonly done. Um, and um, sometimes it's desirable, sometimes it's not. Some people want their own personal workstations. And uh, that has the advantage that if the network's down, they can still work. Um, but that is a consideration. In some environments, it makes a lot of sense to keep the user files jointly mounted on all the workstations. Um, in other environments, that doesn't make sense. Um, likewise, um, in a network, sometimes you want to share application software. Um, um, basically, running a network is more complicated than running just single workstations. Um, there's a lot more to administrating a network just by nature of the fact that it is a network. One of the things that is complicated in the network is if you have a lot of users on your system, should all the users <laughs> be able to log on on any system they sit down on? Uh, or should they only be able to log on on their own personal systems and maybe the systems in their department? And then does that mean you have to install every user on every system? Um, and decisions like that get really complicated. And uh, there's, there's no simple answers. It depends on your environment. But I would want to say that there are tools to basically um, um, install users on multiple systems when they should be installed on multiple systems. One of those tools is a system called NIS, Network Information System, or it used to be called Yellow Pages. It was written by Sun Microsystem. But, um, British Telecom said that Yellow Pages was a trademark term. And um, so um, Sun had to change the name. And they changed the name to NIS, a network information system. But all the commands for Yellow Pages starts with a YP. Uh, they did not change the command names, <laughs> just the system name. Um, and in more modern terms, what we use is a system called LDAP or uh, Active Directory, which is widely used in Windows as well as Linux. And it, that will allow us to centralize the user access information in a central database. And uh, um, that um, workstations can access at any time. And that simplifies the maintenance of the user information. It, it, it really helps us with a lot of things. Um, it also really makes us dependent on the network if there's slowdowns or if the network if the network goes down. But even if the network slows down, um, um, you can be in trouble really quickly. And uh, that's one of the drawbacks with LDAP. I see I'm out of time. I'm also done with the topics, so we will end the um, we will end this week's session right now. Bye bye.